Currently in the UK market, there are 41 mainstream car manufacturers. And of those 41, 32 of them offer a C-segment SUV, with the other nine set to join them very shortly. Why is that? Well, the simple answer is you lot love them. They are currently the third largest segment with 435,182 cars registered in 2022. Just behind that of the lower medium C segment hatchback and the super mini B segment hatchback. However, the market for those two is shrinking. If you look back to 2013, the lower medium segment has dropped 24.1% and the super minis 39.6. However, the C segment SUV market is up a whopping 75.5%. So with all that in mind, how do you go to the top of the class in what is already a very highly contested segment? Well, if what Renault's brought out is anything to go by, they might just have done it. And in this video, we're gonna find out if they have. And this, my friends, is the all new Renault Austral E-Tech full hybrid, to give it its proper name. Now, typically when I show off a new car, I would go through some of the history explaining how we got here. Well, with the Austral, I can't really do that. There isn't really much of a bloodline. Before this was the Kajar, which was Renault's answer in the C-segment SUV market. But prior to that, if you wanted a big spacious Renault, you would have bought an MPV like a Grand Scenic or an Espace. But as tastes have changed, so has Renault. And here we are. So let's take a deeper dive look. Built on the all new CMF CD platform, the new Austral aims to become the benchmark for C segment SUVs and sits at the top of the Renault range, offering the best in technology, engineering, space, and perceived quality. If you look at the front end, you'll notice styling cues familiar from other cars like this chrome checkered grille and the Nouvelle R logo, which is the same as what we had on the Megane. You also get the F1 blade here, and it's all done in a way that sort of makes the car look like it's pushing its shoulders back and puffing out its chest to give a more aggressive stance. However, the highlight is these new Matrix Vision LED headlights. Standard across the range, these lights allow you to have your full beam on all the time without dazzling other drivers. It does this by casting a shadow around vehicles ahead or coming towards you, and constantly adapts according to your surroundings. Oh, and we put these fancy dynamic indicators on, just to finish things off. Down the side, the profile is well proportioned and keeps with that athletic stance, with this two-tone roof that will be familiar to most Renault owners, and that could either then be split up with either a chrome or gloss black trim, depending on the specification you go for. As you move down, typically on SUVs, you get that sort of gray, scratchy plastic, but not on the Austral. Instead, we get this gloss black trim that hugs the alloy wheels. As standard, you would get 19 inch Comar alloy wheels, but on this Esprit Alpine version, you get 20 inch Daytona alloys, named after the famous race circuit that gives us the Rolex 24 hour and the NASCAR 500. It is a personal favourite circuit of mine. As you come round to the back of the car, that gloss black trim on the bottom continues. And then as you move up, you've got these new C-shaped LED rear lights. Finished in this sort of red and grey finish, very similar to the way that we saw on the new facelifted Clio a short while back. Everything's then tapered to the centre line here, where you've got the new Renault logo and the Austral badge sitting proudly front and centre. Now, in case you were wondering where the name Austral comes from, it's actually a translation from the Latin word Australis, which means heat from the Southern Hemisphere. And now you know where Australia got its name from too. Which is ironic, because we are launching this car just as they're going into winter. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that the E has changed colour, and there's good reason for that. You see, Back in 2021, Renault Sport closed its doors and in its place became Alpine cars. And what that meant was that the famous yellow of our Formula One cars turned blue and in some occasions pink. But it also meant that the RS line from our Clios, Captors and Arcanas is no more too. And in its place, we now have 
Esprit Alpine, and it will make its debut on the Austral. So what do you get as part of the Esprit Alpine trim? It starts with the revised front end featuring the F1 blade, matte black roof bars, the chrome trim on the side is replaced with gloss black, Esprit Alpine badging, exclusive 20 inch wheels, the Renault badges also have a darker finish which Renault are calling ice black. Inside you get an Alcantara dashboard and door cards with blue stitching, a welcome sequence for the digital displays, Alpine tread plates, Alpine logos on the headrests as well as special sports seats and probably my favourite part, this Tricolor stitching on the steering wheel. Now regardless of which trim level you go for, this is a really cool interior. Its style is very much like the McGann, but it's not a copy and paste job. This interior is very much tailored for the Austral. As you get in the car, you are welcomed by this new L-shaped panel design that sits on the dashboard, featuring 774 centimeters square of display real estate. The driver gets a 12.3 inch display, which houses all of the information such as fuel, speed, driver messages, and can also model traffic around me using the advanced safety systems. I can even have Google Maps on here too. I get these integrated air vents either side, and then in the center here, I get the OpenR system featuring Android Automotive. It's the same one found in the McGann, and only this time, rather than a nine inch display, you get a 12 inch portrait unit instead. It has the same Google applications as before, so that means I get Google Assistant, Google Maps, and the Google Play Store, where I can download various different apps, including Waze, so if I prefer an alternative mapping solution, I can use that. If you click up here, I'll put a link to my video that I made on how you can install Waze onto this system. Now, as well as that, there's also the Vivaldi browser, which allows you to do things like watch YouTube videos, such as this one here, because we have so much to cover. I can't emphasize how important this car is to Renault. I don't have a vanity problem, honest. Now, when it comes to driving and operating touch screens, it's not really a good combination. It can sometimes be a bit fiddly to hit the icon just as you want it. Fortunately, Renault have thought of that and they've given us this. And while it looks like I should be able to initiate warp drive with it, uh, I can't. And as much as that disappoints me, what it's actually designed to do is it's allowed me to rest my arm to steady myself when using the screen. And as I move it, you may be able to hear it clicks like an old watch into place. So I can then just rest my arm and use the screen in a far more steady manner. Now, for things like heating controls, they're actually on physical buttons just down below. Below that, I also get a 12 volt socket, two USB-C ports, two cup holders, and I get additional storage underneath. I even get this split opening here as well, like it's off some kind of Bentley. Very posh. Also new to the Austral and all Renaults for that matter is this new 9.3 inch heads up display. Now if you've never used one before, it's very much like when you're playing Gran Turismo, where you can see all of the information in front of you as you're driving. So it gives me my speed, it can also give me some support with the driver assistance systems such as the cruise control, and it'll even give me arrow guidance for the GPS data. And I've projected about two meters in front of me, allowing me to keep my eyes on the road at all times, but taking in the information that I need. But of course, we appreciate, it's not for everybody, so you can turn the system off if you want to. The steering wheel is very much the same as the McGann, with controls for the intelligent adaptive cruise control, voice control, and display in front of me. Audiophiles can rejoice too with a choice of two sound systems. As standard, there's the Archimedes Auditorium system, and top spec cars get a 485 watt Harman Kardon system, with five sound ambiences available. So not only will your music sound amazing, but even Ken Bruce's dulcet tones will sound crisp and immersive as you try to think of three top 10 single chart hits for Erasure. And in the back, we're not forgotten about either. You get the same upholstery in the back here as you do in the front. You also get twin USB-C charging ports. I've got loads of headroom and that's even with a sunroof and class leading knee room. And if I need more boot space, I can even pull the handle here 
and I can then pull the seats forward and back 16 centimeters in a 60-40 split. The boot is class leading too with up to 555 liters of space with the seats up and 1525 liters with them folded down. Powering car, there's going to be one option. An all new 200 horsepower 1.2 litre three cylinder petrol engine mated to two electric motors. A small one to take care of things like the starter motor and the alternator and a large one which will assist the petrol engine in powering the wheels. They are then connected to a 400 volts 1.7 kilowatt hour battery. Now by having a 400 volt system as opposed to a 48 volt system, it means it's going to be more efficient compared to a lot of its rivals. And therefore it means that we get class leading fuel economy at 60.1 MPG on a WLTP combined cycle. And it also means we get class leading CO2 figures of 105 grams per kilometer. In the real world, what that means for you is you will get a saving of about 40% on your petrol costs and you will even be able to drive in urban areas up to 80% of the time on pure electric. And all of this is on an engine and drivetrain that you don't need to plug in. Now to handle the constant changing between the electric motor and the petrol engine and to make that smooth, the car requires a certain type of automatic gearbox and Renault calls it multi-mode. And without getting bogged down in all the technical details, it's basically the same as what Alpine use on the Formula One car. I have two electrical gears and then five combustion gears giving me a total of seven and then the car can work out from that what is the best and most efficient way for me to drive the car at any given speed. Now I could already see the comments down below saying Max why are Renault building a hybrid SUV? I thought we were all meant to be going electric. Well the fact of the matter is that people in this segment still want familiarity they want a car that can meet the requirements of their everyday lives as their previous car did before they just want to do it in a more efficient more fuel saving kind of way i'm sure in time renault will make a full electric car in this sort of size and you can bet your bottom dollar i'll be talking about it. so you better get subscribed so that you can get notified when that lands thanks to the cmf cd platform the car benefits from a reinforced frame comprised of materials with high energy absorption to prevent severe deformation in the event of a collision up to 40 miles an hour in the front or the rear and 30 miles an hour if hit from the side. The car also benefits from seven airbags, two at the front, two side, two curtains and a central one to prevent head, shoulder and chest injuries. That is all backed up with free isofix seats, an e-call system, there's even a rescue code which gives instant access to information required by the emergency services. Now knowing all of that is reassuring, but as they say, the best crash to have is the one you don't. And as a result, Renault have fitted over 30 advanced driver assist systems to this car. In fact, there's so many of them, I'm just going to list them all here. Don't be it with you. But it's this one here at the bottom that most intrigues me and is also featured on a badge just over there for control. It was first introduced on the Laguna GT in 2008 and then was followed up by the Megane RS in 2017. Now in its third generation, the full control system constantly monitors my speed, my steering input and my driving style to help me maneuver the car in any way I need to. So if I'm driving slowly, say up to about 18 miles an hour, the car will allow the wheels to turn in the opposite direction to the way I'm steering, up to about 5 degrees. This therefore means the car has a really tight turning circle, which is only 10.1 meters. To put that into perspective, the Renault Clio, a much smaller car, has a turning circle of 10.4 meters. Now when I'm driving at a higher speed, the system will turn the wheels in the same direction as where I'm steering up to about one degree. And it's designed to eliminate understeer, which is something you feel when the front tires give up grip before the rear ones do and push the car out wide in a corner. Now by having this, it therefore means I have more stability, more grip, and it gives me more confidence when I'm feeling a bit more spirited down a B road. Coupled that with a multi-link rear suspension, which in itself offers better stability, more precision and better off-board comfort. 
and you've got a technology on this car that no other car in its class has. None. What you can also do is adjust the sensitivity of the system depending on what mode you have selected on Multisense. What is Multisense, I hear you cry? Well, it's more than just changing the engine mode like you get on other cars. On the Austral, I can also adjust the steering force, the dynamics on the full control system, it'll even change the mood lighting and the thermal comfort. You can adjust it using the Open R Link touchscreen system. I've also got a multi-sense satellite button on the steering wheel. Heck, I can even ask Google to do it. Hey Google, multi-sense eco. Okay, setting the car to the eco driving mode. Pretty cool, huh? At launch, the Austral will be available in three trim levels. Techno, Techno Esprit Alpine and Iconic Esprit Alpine. As the entry level car, the Techno features a generous amount of standard kit, including the Matrix LED vision headlights, 19 inch coma alloy wheels, the large displays, as well as the heads up display, multi-sense including customizable ambient lighting, front and rear park assist, rear camera, blind spot warning, the Archimedes 8 speaker audio system, and much, much more. Move up to the Techno Esprit Alpine, and that adds the sport styling including the 20 inch Daytona alloys, the F1 blade on the front bumper, the two tone black roof, Esprit Alpine badging, as well as Alcantara door and dashboard inserts with blue stitching, and carbon fabric seats. Additional specification includes a powered tailgate, electrically adjustable heated front seats with massage function, adaptive cruise control, active driver assist, traffic sign recognition with speed alert, lane change warning, and a heated steering wheel. Sitting top of the range then is the iconic Esprit Alpine, which includes all of the features of the previous two trims, but upgrades the Archimedes audio system to the Harman Kardon setup. It adds a panoramic sunroof, wireless phone charger, 360 degree all round view camera, and the full control advanced steering system. There will also be a range of accessories, including a roof box and bars, electric tow bar, side skirts, boot mat, and various floor mats for added ruggedness or plushness. In my hand here is what we call the dealer learning guide. It's a 57 page document highlighting everything there is to know about the all new Austral. Now, if I covered everything in this book, in this video, we would have been here for hours. Now, fortunately for you, my colleagues at my Weybridge and Aldershot showrooms have been studying this booklet cover to cover, so that when you come in to see the car for yourself, they'll be able to go through all the really cool features in much more detail. And judging by what we've seen with this car, I can see their diaries getting booked up very quickly. Now, if you want to get in on their diaries, click the link up here, and I'll pop a link in the description as well, where you can get in on their diaries, and it will also give you the latest information with regards to ordering the vehicle. Otherwise, unless I'm very much mistaken, which I usually am, we're done here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen and you want to check out more cool content about Renault, check out our website, smcrenault.co.uk. You can find us on socials, Facebook and Instagram, at smcrenault. We're also on TikTok, LinkedIn and Twitter, at smcmotorgroup. And if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe and click the bell icon to always get notified whenever we make new content. Otherwise, I'm Max, this is SMC Motor Group, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.